Welcome to the third and final episode of Project T80. In this episode, I'll finally decide on a colour scheme and get some paint on this speed machine. I ended the last episode with the T80 just needing a few minor details, but basically ready for paint. I used some brass tubing to add the mounting points for the body. There were two at the front and four along each of the sides. I also scribed in the few panel lines there are and added the rivet detail between the rear wheels, where I guess there must be a join in the aluminium. The rivets were just brass rod glued into the bodywork and then rounded over. I also drilled out the exhausts, which was an easy task and gives a more realistic effect. With my best efforts to fill and smooth out any issues with the bodywork, I decided it was now time to break out the primer. I decided to start with a coat of high build filler primer, which should show me where the body needed more work, as well as tackling any minor defects. This was really easy to spray, and went on very well, just building up in light coats. The colour made the T80 look like the world's fastest banana, but it did give me an even finish overall, and showed me instantly where it needed more work. The T80 is a bit of an awkward shape to spray, as it needs coverage on the top and bottom. Fortunately, I could stand it on a block of steel while I sprayed the upper surface. The uniform colour and gloss of the wet primer really brought the T80 to life, dramatically highlighting the curves. I managed to get a good coat on without any serious runs, which I was worried about, especially on the sides of the wheel arches. And here it is, 24 hours later, with the primer fully dried. It's pretty good, but it has shown me a few areas that need more attention. In particular, the seam between the mid and rear 3D prints. I'd been chasing this for some time to no avail, but decided to tackle it with some Mr. Surface of filler. I chose to apply this with a bamboo skewer, which was a lot more rigid and precise than a brush. It was just a matter of carefully going round, filling anything that looked like trouble, including that nasty seam. The Mr. Surfacer dried quickly and sanded down well. I'd also gone over the T80 thoroughly, sanding down any other problem areas I came across. Then it was time to give everything a coat of grey primer from a rattle can. This would give the top coat the best chance of adhesion and prevent any of the yellow filler primer showing through. Again I put plenty on and was fortunate not to get any runs. With the primer on the bodywork now fully dry, I could thoroughly inspect the surface and was relieved to find out it was now perfect for the top coat. I also gave all the chassis, cockpit and wheels a coat of primer. The finish here wasn't so critical, as most of this was hardly visible, but I didn't want to let down the rest of the model, so I gave everything my full attention. Now came the point where I had to choose a colour scheme for the T80. The T80 body shell was handmade from aluminium back in 1938, and this is how it's displayed today in the Mercedes Museum in Stuttgart. That's fine, but I wanted something a bit less boring and depicting how the car would have been finished and run when it was attempting the high speed records. At the very least, it would have been painted silver, as were all the other silver arrows back in the day. It would have also carried the Mercedes badge on the nose. The T80 program and indeed all of the Silver Arrows, were funded by the Third Reich, and many of the later cars carried the swastika, as they were used as propaganda tools. These were fairly discreet and placed near the cockpit. 
The T80 program had gained a lot of support from Hitler, who nicknamed the car Schwarzevogel, or Blackbird. Picking up on this, I thought the Nazi crest would be perfect for the front of the car. I think this scheme is very credible for the T80, and this is how I plan to finish my version. But let's take things further, and see what other options we can consider. Here I've added a red tail flash, which is reminiscent of the vast Zeppelins, and was often carried on aircraft of the period. Taking the Blackbird concept a little further, what if we went all black? I do like this scheme, it's very sinister, and looks like something the SS would drive around in. To get a really good silver, I contacted Model Innovations, who have an excellent range of paints specifically for airbrushing. You can find out more about their ranges at their website. They're really helpful. There's a link in the description. After getting some samples, I decided to go with their number 5 silver. They advised me to spray the colour over grey primer and build it up in thin coats. By this time, I'd given the body a light sanding with 600 grit wet and dry. This gave the primer a glass smooth finish, taking out any of the dusty overspray. Then it was the moment of truth. I broke out my Harder and Steenbeck and loaded it up with paint straight from the bottle. Taking their advice, I went for thin coats, slowly building up the coverage. Occasionally I'd get tiny fish eyes in the surface, but they quickly disappeared on their own. The metallic particles in this paint are very fine, and it sprays well. I had no issues at all. The only problem I did have was getting an even coverage. That was down to using too fine a needle. Operator error. But after a few coats, I managed to get a result I was happy with. And here it is, fully dried and ready for decals. I also sprayed and painted the chassis parts. These were a lot simpler. I used a few shades of Tamiya black on the tyres, and gave the seat a dirty wash over a base of red-brown. Then I was good to go. The decals were printed on my inkjet printer. I printed the eagles on clear decal paper, and the instruments on white decal paper, and I had plenty of options when it came to applying the decals to the model. I'll be making a how-to video on decal design and printing soon, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications, so you can see it when it goes live. So, here's the chassis completed and ready to go. The decals for the instruments came out well, and the seat looks quite passable for leather. The wheels and tyres have also come out well, even though you won't see much of them. To prepare the body shell for the decals, I gave it a good coat of the latest incarnation of Johnson's Clear. It's now sold as Pledge Revive It. There's an Amazon link in the description. It's really thin, and to apply it, I decided to go low-tech and use something called a paintbrush. It goes on really well, and forms a good glossy finish, perfect for the decals. And here's the finished T80, decaled and varnished just with the Revive It. The vacuum formed windscreen was secured in place with Micro Crystal Clear, as were the painted brass rods for the bracing struts. In these days of censorship, I feel it's important to represent history as honestly as we can. Although this scheme is to a degree speculative, it is credible. Today many shy away from the use of the swastika, preferring to censor its use. I dare say this video will never be monetized. That's a risk I'm prepared to take. We must be objective and learn from history, not making the same mistakes again. I would never seek to glorify the regime of tyranny and persecution that led to the creation of the T-80, but that was the role of this car. It was a propaganda tool. Censorship means that we will ultimately forget the lessons of the past, and history will repeat itself over and over again, something we should never allow to happen. I'm not alone in being criticised for the subject matter I choose to model. Germany in the 1930s and Second World War are popular periods for modellers, as there are many fascinating subjects. Often full of history, detail and colour, the many radical designs often make more exciting models than the drab Allied vehicles. I used the T-80 to experiment and learn about new techniques and materials. 
and to that end the project has been a complete success. I had no idea how to accurately model something this sculptural before I started. I discovered how to design and 3D print the large parts involved, and more importantly, how to finish them to an acceptable standard. I'm delighted with the result, and now feel able to tackle similar sculptural projects with confidence. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. You can even explore in more depth some of the techniques I use in my popular how-to series. Firstly, I have to get back onto Project Stug, which has been slowly making progress in the background. But here's a taste of what's to come. It's not German. It's something with a little more detail, and it's already 3D printed, so you can expect to find out more soon. I hope you've enjoyed Project T80. If you have, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. If you have any questions about the T80, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.